I love my chicken thighs braised in bell pepper sauce because it's the first recipe that I mastered as an apprentice cook. Now, one of the first tips when you learn as an apprentice is mise en place, to have everything in its place, all the ingredients. So that's what I'm doing, chopping up the vegetables before I even pull out the chicken. So I've chopped up basically one whole onion or about a cup and a celery stalk here. And essentially, I'm making a sauce from scratch, but building in the flavors that you find in a chicken stock. And as the chicken cooks in the sauce, it brings out its flavor. So it's rich, it's flavorful, without being heavy, and it kind of tastes like a chef made it. When you hear that something's braised, you assume that it's gonna take hours and hours and hours on the stove or in the oven to cook. But seeing as it's chicken and it's tender, it only takes 45 minutes to an hour at the tops on the stove. And now for a little fresh thyme. Now this is a real chef's herb, but it wakes up and heightens all the other flavors in the dish. And when you're giving it that time to cook in the liquid with the peppers and everything, it really completes it. That's one of those valuable tips I picked up. And I'll just give it a little chop. I won't worry about how fine it is because I will be pureeing the sauce later on. Because I bought boneless, skinless chicken thighs, I have no buffer between the bottom of the pan and the chicken itself, so I find a coating of cornstarch really helps prevent it from sticking. What's important when searing, because searing is a key part to caramelize the chicken a little bit, promote browning, build some nice flavor in there, is to not crowd the pan, so I'll do this in two batches. I like the fact that braised dishes like this reheat well. That way, not only can Michael and I enjoy it tonight, but we'll be able to have it tomorrow. I can pack him up a little lunch. See how with the cornstarch in there, the chicken just slides around on the bottom of the plate. Searing is a key part before you add the liquid to caramelize the chicken a little bit, promote browning, build some nice flavor in there. Beautiful browning on both sides. Ooh, that's a lot of chicken. That's definitely enough for Michael and I for tonight and for tomorrow. And now it's time to cool the pan down a little bit with the vegetables. First, the onions and celery. Just like when I was making the polenta with the fruits and I started with the apples, Sometimes you have to cook your vegetables at different rates, and onions and celery take that little bit longer to sweat out. I know when Michael walks in the door, when I'm the one cooking dinner, if he smells onions and celery cooking, he responds to that, and I know it's one of his feel-good flavors, too. The peppers only take a second, but let's get them in the pan. And now for the garlic. I always add the garlic right before I'm about to add the liquid. It's loaded with natural sugars that caramelize a lot faster than onion. So now that I've got the garlic, I'm gonna add about a cup and a half of chicken stock. You can add water if you don't have chicken stock. That's about it. A little bay leaf, actually two of them. Adds to the aroma. So now we can turn this up bring it to a simmer, and add back all that chicken. So now that 90% of the work is done, I just have to wait. I'll let the simmer for about 45 minutes, and then comes the pureeing and the thickening of the sauce. The time has passed. Mm. And I love how the fragrance transforms. When I first put the peppers in, it smelled like fresh peppers. Now it's got that rich, cooked chicken fragrance to it. Oh, it smells so good. Take it off the heat. Melt in your mouth chicken. Oh, bit of pepper in there. The meat just 
almost melts away. And now to puree the sauce. Nice and smooth. And now, whoa. <laughs> Stay. And it's important to add cold butter. It makes your sauce beautifully thick and shiny, and it won't split. <laughs> now, something else I picked up to not salt your dish until you're done cooking, because liquid follows the salt. And so to control where you want the liquid to go, stay in the chicken, stay in the sauce, I do the seasoning afterwards. Warm up my chicken again, give it a little taste. 